Hey everybody! So today I'm going to break down a very basic but extremely effective DPS build for PvE. It's a little bit difficult to get all the pieces with high rolls, so I'll share some variations of it as well. Looking at my build, you can see that I'm running 3 Providence, which gives me headshot damage, critical hit chance, and critical hit damage. Then I've got a Fenris holster for the assault rifle damage. My knee pads are the named overlord Fox's Prayer, and finally the Coyote Mask. I'm also running an assault rifle and rifle. My AR is the FAMAS 2010. I use this because it has very high burst damage, but to be honest, the ARs are very well balanced in this game, so anything will do. Just make sure your weapons have damage to target out of cover as the attribute, as it is far superior than anything else you can roll on them. For the talent, I have Optimist. For PvE, this is a very good talent. I also like Ranger and Strained. My rifle is the named M1A called Baker's Dozen. This has long been the most popular rifle in the game. It has good damage, a reasonable rate of fire, and the talent Perfect Lucky Strike will significantly reduce the amount of time you spend reloading, thus improving your damage output. If you don't have this weapon, the classic M1A is also very good. Just try to get damage to target out of cover though. Moving on to my knee pads. The reason these are best in slot for DPS builds is the 8% damage to target out of cover. Even if you're not using a rifle, these knee pads are great because most enemies are out of cover 90 plus percent of the time. If you don't have these yet, you can use One Piece Grupo, Seska, or even Overlord since you're using a rifle. Next up is the Coyote Mask. I love this mask because it gives you great DPS stats. In PvE, most enemies will be further than 15 meters away, so with this mask, I only need to run 50% critical hit chance. Then the bonus will bump me up to 60%. For enemies further away, I'll usually swap to my rifle, so I have pretty low critical hit chance on my rifle because I'll be getting 25% from the mask. This means that I can put on stability mods to keep firing steady. If enemies come closer than 15 meters, I won't have perfect critical hit chance, but I'll be getting an additional 25% critical hit damage, which is huge. My backpack is unbreakable. This works as a get out of jail free card. I run this on pretty much every build I use. You get 95% of your armor back when it drops to zero. So basically a free instant med kit when you need it most. Just remember it has a 60 second cooldown. Onto my backpack, I'm running Perfect Vigilance. It's another great talent. It gives you 25% multiplicative damage at all times as long as you haven't taken damage for 3 seconds. So if you get shot, just stay in cover for 3 seconds and you'll get the buff back. The only difference between Perfect Vigilance and Vigilance is on the regular backpack it takes 4 seconds to recover the 25% buff. So if you don't have the named backpack, it's no big deal. For gloves, you have a couple options. You can run the named Petrov gloves called Contractor's Gloves. They give you 8% damage to armor, but I prefer running Providence. Grupo or Seska work just as well too. The reasons I don't like the Contractor's Gloves are, I don't use an LMG, and there are so many enemies, especially Black Tusk, that don't have armor. The Warhounds, Heavies, Mini Tanks, Weak Points, Shields all have health, so damage to armor won't do anything to them. And finally, just a regular Fenris holster. You can see on my gear, I try to maximize my critical hit damage. You want it rolled on every piece, if possible. After that, you want close to 60% critical hit chance, and then you can roll headshot damage or handling for the rest. It's up to you. Ah, also my sidearm. I run the card pistol. It gives me one skill tier while it is drawn. So if I'm running a pulse or any skill that is active while I'm holding the weapon, it'll be bumped up to tier one. Also, this talent finisher is absolutely amazing. I didn't even know it existed until recently. So if I finish an enemy with this gun, then swap to my primary weapon within 10 seconds, I get 30% critical hit chance and 30% critical hit damage for 15 seconds. So anytime I have an enemy down to one shot, I'll swap to my pistol, finish him, then swap back, and I'll get the boost. On to my stats. 
on my FAMAS, I have 52% critical hit chance, which is actually a bit high. You can get away with 45% while running the Coyote Mask. Then 150% critical hit damage, which may seem a bit low, but I've got the damage to targets out of cover, and I'll often be getting another 10% from enemies between 15 to 25 meters. I have a lot of accuracy and stability, but this is just personal preference. Switching the handling to headshot damage is fine too. I just want to maximize the number of shots I'm hitting. My defenses are all low because in PvE, using an AR build, you just want to maximize your damage output. The NPCs hit super hard, regardless if you've got 900k armor or 1.5 million armor. So forget the blues, just max out your damage, use cover wisely, then you've got Unbreakable to protect you. Finally, my specialization is Gunner. I think this is awesome for PvE. First, the Riot Foam Grenades are great for getting targets out of cover. And if you land it, the immobilization time is super long. Definitely my favorite grenades for PvE. You also get 10% armor on kill, another amazing perk, especially if you're running solo. So remember that any talent or perk that is on kill is best when you're running solo. Also, if you're at zero armor, your unbreakable won't proc, but with this, if you kill an enemy, you'll get 10% armor back, then your unbreakable can bring you back to 95%. Every third reload is 50% faster. This can save your butt at certain times, but it's every third reload so it's not that reliable. 30% bonus armor when applying an armor kit. You can't go wrong with bonus armor. The Banshee Pulse is an easy to use status effect with a large area of effect. I'll sometimes use this in place of the Riot Foam Chem Launchers and Jammer Pulse. You also get 10% of your total ammo every 60 seconds. Teammates get 5%. This is huge when you're running ammo directives. If you use Gunner and Baker's Dozen, you'll never run out of ammo. 10% handling when not moving for one second. Well, in PvE, I'll be spending most of my time in cover so this is another very useful perk. Remember that 10% handling equals 10% accuracy, 10% stability, 10% reload speed, and 10% swap speed. And then another on-kill perk, 5% rate of fire for 5 seconds after killing an enemy. It's only a short time, but it's still pretty good. So that's my build. I can easily solo heroics with this. Legendaries are also no problem if you know the mechanics of the mission. Don't worry too much about maxing the attributes and whatnot. The most important thing is the brand sets and the attribute rules. So 5% damage to target out of cover or 7% critical hit damage is better than full swap speed or full skill haste for example. Also, feel free to replace any of the Providence, Coyote Mask or Fox's Prayer knee pads with one Seska and or Grupo. But you don't want something like two Fenris or a Wyvern, a Henna Yu, etc. These brand sets will go to waste with this build. If you're new to heroics or legendaries, don't feel that you need a bit of armor to protect you. It'll hardly help. You want to get that damage output as high as possible. Just watch your teammates. Where are they positioning themselves? Which NPCs are they focusing on? So quickly in my skills, I'll usually run the Riot Foam Chem Launcher or Jammer Pulse against Black Tusk. And because I often play solo, the Reviver Hive. And that's that. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions or if I missed anything, leave a message in the comments section below. Happy farming and I'll see you in the next video. That bitch can hide blood. I got you now. The media.
Medical assistance needed. Agent down. on the way, Maya. Sit tight and just try to stay calm. Put out the flames. I don't know if Maya has any fireproof gear. for now but i don't think they're gonna stop coming after me i don't know what i did to make them so mad you have to stop them they're coming it's not safe
Vital signs critical. Okay, what? 